Alright, let's put a new battery in an F800GS. First, turn the key and take the seat off. Then you're going to need a T25 Torx. On top of the faux gas tank, there are uh, four Torx uh, bolts that uh, you have to remove. On either side of the ignition, there are also two Torx on the uh, sides of the black plastic cover. Then you can just pop the uh, faux cover off. You'll notice that it's still connected to the uh, power outlet. That's the factory outlet. I also have a second outlet. So uh, you don't really need to disconnect those wires. You can just prop it up. And you'll see that on top of the battery retaining strap, there's some wiring. I had some zip ties that I needed to cut to get all that out of the way. Then it's time to disconnect the battery. Now you can start with the negative because if you bridge the negative to any part of the bike you don't get any sparks as I just demonstrated. So uh, let's take the negative off first and then the positive. And now that the negative's not attached, if the screwdriver accidentally touches any metal part of the bike, you won't get a spark. With those out of the way, we can get in with a I think that says T30 on there in the rust, T30 Torx. And uh, let's remove the two fasteners that hold the battery retaining strap clip, whatever it's called. Then it's as easy as lifting the battery out. You'll notice it's a sealed battery, so there's no drain hose to worry about. And here we see the old battery and the new battery. I did not buy the uh, overpriced BMW battery. I got this one from a place called Sask Battery in Regina. And I like them because they actually give you a battery test report when you buy the battery from them. You have to put in the little captured nuts, especially because everyone likes saying captured nuts. And while you're in here and you've got the T30 on the end of the wrench, why not pop off the air filter and take a look? This is the old style F800 air filter. The new ones have a mesh screen on the top. And it was in there nice and tight. It was a little dirty, but uh, not worth changing for me at least. Pop the cover back on. Replace the four airbox screws and you're ready to slide the battery back in we drop the battery back in and you can see it fits in there nice and snug then we'll put the uh, battery retaining bracket I don't know what that thing's called back in place you can see where the negative terminal fits through a little notch in it and over on the positive side, there's a little clip there that the positive terminal sits on. And if you're like me and you've got a bunch of accessories, you're going to have some extra wiring. So we're going to uh, tighten down the two fasteners on the battery retainer. And uh, you know, we're not going to go crazy on these things. We're threading. We're just trying to hold down a, a battery here. We're not trying to hold the rear wheel on. Then it's time to stack all of your connectors. I've got an extra 12 volt plug and I've got a battery charging plug and a few other things on there. So we'll put the bolt through and oddly enough when you're putting the battery back in you put the positive first. Once again if I now touch part of the bike with the screwdriver I won't get a spark because the negative is not connected and the entire frame of the bike is negative. Now sometimes when you're trying to do this, especially if you have a lot of accessories, it won't quite grip that little captured nut. So then you can just take a screwdriver and stick it underneath and just pry up on the nut until you get a couple of threads grabbing. So I'm just holding up the nut with that and once it grabs, I don't need the screwdriver anymore. Make sure everything's tucked away. If you got a any wiring that you'd like to fasten down, you can add a few zip ties. Here I'm putting the connector back. Make sure everything's nice and tidy. And I'm a big fan of zip ties. You have a wire that's flapping around under there while you're riding off-road. 
there's a lot of sharp edges. It's going to fray something and short out. I like to make sure my little metal clips are on and that the holes are lined up. And then it's time to put the, uh, the faux tank centerpiece back in. And you can see it just snaps in there. There's a few little tabs that have slots. If you've ever assembled IKEA furniture, you won't have any problem with this. And then we drive home with our T25, our four fasteners on the top. And here you can see it's a little better. You get a better sense of where the remaining two fasteners are on the left and right sides of the ignition. Then uh, turn the key, and hopefully it starts. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed another awesome player's off-road motorcycle club technical tip. If you like the video, please hit like. Uh, hit the subscribe button, too, to keep up to date. You can also visit us on our Facebook page or website, and those links are down below. Have a good one.